Hey, what's up, Street Talks? This is Eric Kim from the Eric Kim Street Photography Blog. Uh, currently here in Dubai at Gold Photo Plus 2014 with my buddy Steve Simon. Hey, so great to meet yeah. you this week. What an amazing week. It was, it was oh, phenomenal. Inspiring. inspiring. Um, I wanted to do this quick interview with Steve, his um, the author of The Passion of Photographer, as well, uh, as well as many other photo books. He's an accomplished, uh, award winning uh, photographer, and he's done a lot of documentary work all around the world. And I had the chance to know him more as a human being, but still want to learn more about you and your photography and your life experiences. So, to start off, you want can you give us a brief, just a quick life story? You know, you sure. were, you know, <laughs> where you're from, you know, how you got yeah. started in photography. Yeah, I mean, like you, I'm kind of a street photographer. I mean, that was my roots. I was born in Montreal, Canada, and when I was a young kid, I think at 12, 13 years old, I would wander the streets of Montreal. Inspired by Cartier Bresson, because I had seen his work somewhere. The decisive moment. Oh my God! I mean, that was like the the ultimate. Just to wander around with your camera and take pictures. And you know, I've been doing that since I was a kid. I'm probably more passionate about it now than I've ever been. And uh, it's a blessing to find photography at any time. But I feel really lucky to have found it so young. So, you know, can you talk a little bit more about passion? So, you know, you do a lot of workshops and you teach and. You know, you've written the, your, your very well-known book, uh, The Passion yeah. of Photographer. Uh, what is passion for you in photography? Yeah. Well, for me, passion is sort of tapping into sort of what you respond to personally. And, you know, in my workshops and in the book, I, I talk about considering um, trying to create a, a set of pictures, a set of pictures that connect so that each individual picture is strong. But then when you see the sum of the parts, there's, there's even a greater communication that happens. Yeah, so you asked me about uh, the passion of photographer, and, and I think that all of us that get into photography are passionate to a certain degree. But in my experience, where the work really starts to shine, mm -hmm. and it was Deanne Arbus who said something to the effect that the more personal you make it, the more universal it becomes. Mm -hmm. So that is, the more you can sort of think to yourself, well, what is it that really I'm responding to on the street or in my life and, and investigate that and start to do a set of pictures so that, in my experience, the, the sum becomes greater than the parts. Each individual picture has to be strong, but when you start to put them together, you realize that, hey, these pictures are kind of saying the same thing, so I'm going to cast this one aside and it forces you to maybe peel the onion and look a little deeper and, and move in a forward direction in your work. That's been my experience. And starting a project, be it a specific story or a theme or just, you know, a feeling, you know, that you're doing, you're getting on the street, um, profoundly can accelerate your progress in photography. So, so really that's what it's about. Uh, it's worked for me, so when I'm doing workshops, I definitely want to encourage my students to do that. Well, so you talk about um, the importance of working on projects and I definitely agree that projects are a great way for a photographer to you know, find more of his or her own voice and have something to say. I think the difficult thing is um, you know, for street photographers as opposed to let's say more traditional documentary photographers where you know a documentary photographer, I'm going to visit a family, I'm going to live with them for two years, I'm going to make a story, whereas street photography you know, it's a little bit more tricky, right? Because, yeah. you know, you're kind of on the streets and there's like so much unpredictability. Can you share a little bit about how street photographers could better, and you know, based on your experiences, yeah. Yeah. create bodies of work or yeah. books or projects yeah. without having that sort of control that a documentary or a photojournalist would Right, have? right. Well, one way I think, Eric, is to, you know, get more specific. So, for example, um, if there's one particular area or one particular street where that you can kind of focus your attention on and just you know, inch wide, mile deep, stay in that area, explore that area, keep shooting, keep shooting, spill it all out, see what you got, see the different kinds of things, see, if, see how you feel about the place that you're in and see if the street sh shots are, are kind of reflecting that. Um, the other thing too is like, you know, often like certain times of the day that I like to shoot, sun low in the sky, shadows for example, I love shadows, I think you yeah, I love shadows. You know, if, if, if I know that I'm in a particular, you know, time of day where shadows are really cool and prominent, I may just go and turn my street attention to shadows. And the more, when I look for shadows, I find shadows. And it gives me kind of direction and focus for that particular session. And sometimes I might even be inspired by that shadow session to the point where 
I'm going to add those shadows all over the world. And in my experience, because I'm shooting all the time, or yeah. trying to shoot all the time, um, I could have certain themes um, that pop up uh, all the time in my street work, and I can put it in my Aperture album, you know, like all the shadow pictures, and, you know, because that same raw file can live in different places. And for me, uh, sometimes I have enough of a certain kind of street shot that it's a bit of a tipping point that gets me excited about working on a project, it's still street photography, but with that thread of shadows, for example, or whatever it is. Maybe it's an emotion, maybe it's a color, or whatever. So, you know, I find that that's one way to kind of, um, you know, focus my attention. I'm still going out there, serendipity is my guide, but sometimes, you know, it helps for me to, to have a little more direction with my camera. Um, you know, having direction in your photography, um, you've published several books, not just The Passion of Photographer, but your own uh, project-based photography books. Right. Um, out of all the books you've published, um, can you share maybe um, a personal favorite or one that really sticks out yeah. for you? Well, I think it would have to be the Heroines and Heroes book, which is uh, a set of pictures that I made in several countries in Sub-Saharan Africa. And, you know, that's when a photography project became kind of bigger than me because, you know, when I think about it, you know, photography is a very personal thing and it's all about you, this is your work, your vision and all that. Um, but when I worked on that project, I realized that, uh, sure, it was my work and my vision, but the power of the photograph, and I still believe in the tremendous power of the photograph, because nothing communicates like a still photo does. We may be bombarded by zillions of images these days, but video, you know, it takes time to see a video. Uh, yeah. reading, reading a book, and that's where the, the thousand words things comes in. But when you see a strong photograph, you know, in an instant, it communicates so much, mm -hmm. and, and that's a great opportunity for us. So in a world where people have a very short attention span, um, photography is kind of where it's at, you know, and we have a, a great opportunity. So the Heroines and Heroes book, um, because I was privy, and, and I knew that maybe some good could come from it, because yeah. I was dealing with, you know, a, a problem in Sub-Saharan Africa, the scourge of AIDS was like, devastating. And I knew that if I would work on the project, the longer I work on it, I would get strong pictures. I would certainly benefit from it. But that particular book, um, uh, we had sort of in the back of the book uh, places that people, if they were inspired by the pictures and want to get involved or help, they well, could. So it, it became kind of, you know, a bit of a mission. Mm -hmm. and, and it was just a tremendous experience. And even though I, it was some of it, I was on assignment, but a lot of it was just my own thing. Um, I, I gave a lot uh, of my, my own time and money to make it happen, but I got so much back, as, as often as the case you know, when you do your photography. Uh, it was just an, a, an amazing experience. So that was a little bit more special, I guess. Um, one of the things we talked about breakfast today was the idea of vulnerability. Mm, yes. um, you know, when you're photographing you know, sub-Saharan Africa, um, yes. you know, a lot of these individuals make themselves vulnerable to you as a photographer, um, how are you able to build a sense of trust with your subjects, um, yeah. especially when you're working on such personal projects yeah. like that? Well, I think uh, for me, um, the main thing is that when someone lets me into their life, you know, they may be sick and you know, they understand kind of what's going on, they have to know exactly what I'm doing and why I'm there. I'm, I'm not a voyeur. Um, but at the same time, I don't shy away from the reality of what I'm seeing. And when they participate, they know, and I, I know this, they know that me being there, and maybe these pictures will somehow um, help the situation. It may, it may not help that specific person, but they know they're a part of something that um, will kind of live on. And, and you know, it, it's difficult sometimes to look for me to go back to see the book, because I know that many of my subjects that were in these pictures are no longer here. And, but I also know that um, my responsibility to them was to make the strongest pictures because the strongest images I thought I think will will create the, the strongest reaction, positive reaction and, and help. And I, I know, you know, it's just adding my voice as a photographer to, to a big problem. Um, and I you know I it, it can do some good. So I mean photography as we know, you know, a great street photo photograph can, can evoke uh, a feeling in person, make someone smile, make someone look.
and when you're working on a very difficult subject matter, um, I, I guess I guess you really have to be clear as to why you're there, and to make it as strong as possible. You owe that to the, the people that allow you into a very private and, and difficult uh, time in your life. Um, another thing that I really admire um, you is just like how you just you know you you've obviously been shooting for a long time now. But you still have this overwhelming sense of energy and enthusiasm for yeah. photography. Yeah. Um, do you ever go through periods where you're not feeling as inspired? And you know, how do you just keep, you know, keep the ideas for making new books, for yeah. teaching, for to go out making photos for yourself? Like, you know, all these decades of work under your belt. Like, how do you keep going? You know? Well, part of it is like I'm inspired by photographers that you know I see and photographs that I see. You know, photographs from you. The students here at GPP, I mean, my class, I mean, they made some amazing, amazing photos. Um, the other thing too is, I, I maintain, I've said this before, that in, in photography and in visual arts, um, I see people in their 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s doing their best work, yeah. and I don't think I'm just fooling myself because I myself am, am aging. You know, I look at music and I see that, uh, you know, maybe Paul McCartney with the Beatles arguably did his best work, even though all the amazing work he did after that. In the visual arts, I look at you know Joseph Kudelka. Oh, Kudelka, yeah, too. the man. You know, the guy is like 75, and I've heard that he's shooting because he can. And when he gets old, you know, that's when he'll maybe not shoot so much and and, and uh, edit the edit film. the shots. So you know, the thing is, the trick is to to get out there and shoot. So when you're feeling a little bit uh, uninspired, you just gotta force your way out there and start shooting. And I, I that's probably my biggest weakness. I'm not maybe shooting as much as I should. And having a project though also inspires because, you know, again, if you start to have a few great shots yeah. and you realize, hey, this is something that is going to be something, so it forces you, it doesn't force you, it just makes you want to get out there and, and add to it because maybe I could do a book or, or an exhibition or, or you know, whatever it is. So the better it gets, the more I get excited to, to get out there and shoot. But getting out there sometimes. Part because life gets in the way, and as a professional photographer, I can't always be doing the, the stuff I most love to do, like roaming the streets, like I did when I was a kid, pretending to be a um, <laughs> You know, speaking of working on projects, so let's say you go out you're shooting this project. Um, you know, generally when you're working on projects, how long do they usually take you? Uh, well, I mean, you know, I did a book on the Republican convention in 2004, and that was one week. And, but that week was just a crazy week. There was so much going on. There was like protests and there was, you know, the actual inside and it was, it was just, it depends, right? And, and other projects go on forever. I mean, I think, you know, our street work, we just keep going out there and then eventually, you know, we have this body of work and we look at it and maybe we can pluck out certain images and, you know, a story is told. It may not be literal, hopefully it will be more sort of lyrical or poetic. Yes. So there's, there's no straight answer on that. Some things will go on forever. I heard that some people, um, you know, you never really finish a project, you kind of decide to abandon it and sort of move on to the next thing. But um, yeah, it, it, no straight answer on but that. But then, then how do you know when uh, to abandon your project? Yeah. When do you know to stop? Because often when I'm working on my projects, yeah. I keep working on working on working on it. And I don't know the moment either I should give up on it or if I should keep going or, you know, when do you know to finish yeah, a project? Well, that's a good question. You know, I did a project where I traveled all the states that border Canada on a couple oh. of road trips. And it was an amazing experience and a great project. And for me, the encapsulation of a project often is, is a book. You know, I think the book, you know, speaks to a project and kind of puts a bit of a period at the end of it because this is my story, these are the pictures, out of all of them I chose these and I printed them amazingly and I sweated over the order. Um, and that, that project that I started you know, over 10 years ago, um, I came close to getting it published but I never did. So now I'm looking at that body of work which is obviously dated but and I'm thinking well how can I refresh it in some way. So, so that's a project that I think I might get reborn, and I might, and I'm inspired by other things. Like I'll see, like Alex Soth's work. He's done a road trip in a very different way, and maybe I can take that old stuff and then pepper it with some different kinds of things. So I'm, you know, it's it's, it's wonderful because it's always uh, always new stuff that you can do, and you know, some projects maybe you can.
complete and a tangible way. Others, you know, you let go of for a while and maybe you'll come back to me. Um, one of the difficulties I have when I'm working on a project, and you know, I haven't published um, a book of mine yet, but um, the thing I always have a difficulty is understanding you know, the best process in terms of editing your shots as well as sequencing. Yeah. Can you walk us a little bit about how you edit and sequence the book? Like, you know, how many people do you have collaborate? Are there instances where you love a shot but your editor is like, no, that doesn't work? Right. Can you share us a little sure. bit about the process and the collaboration? Yeah, I think, as you know, like editing is kind of impossible right? because, you know, I often, like in my class, I say, you know, with your digital image, you've got the metadata, and when you try and edit, you've got the emotional metadata. When you see the oh. picture, it sticks in your brain. So sometimes time will allow you to be more subjective. But ultimately, all of us need Well, time will let you be more objective. Yeah, yeah, by leaving space between editing, and in a digital world, you know, we see it right away. But I think sometimes you can come back to it and see things a little fresh. But I think that we all need help. I mean, we all need help because we're too close to it. And sometimes we, even after all these years, we see things, we have experience, we see things that maybe is not being communicated in, in the picture. So, yeah, so I think the editing process for me, obviously, um, I tend to shoot a lot, and, and that makes it kind of hard, you know, and it's hard for me to sit down for sort of a long period of time, so I, I, you know, take breaks and so on and so forth. But my editing process has to be thorough. I want to make sure I don't miss anything, right, so I have to look at every single frame. Um, but ultimately, uh, for me, as a photographer, I need help because I'm too close to this stuff. So I'll go to certain people that I trust, that can articulate, you know, they like this or don't like it and why. But ultimately, I take responsibility, but I want to hear what they have to say, because sometimes they'll say something that makes sense to me that I didn't really, really see. Um, and then, you know, putting together a project, um, I will, like, make little prints, and I will spread them out and live with them, if, if it's a book that I'm doing. So I will sort of try and choose the best images, and, and then I will live with them for a long time. I, I like the physical aspect of, of putting the puzzle together, and, and, and it may take a lot of time, but in my experience I've found that, uh, especially because I've done books to deadline, that when, when that deadline hits, I will just kind of do an instinct. I remember with the Republicans book, because I had a pretty tight deadline, so I did the best I could, I put it together, I chose the best pictures, and then sent it off, and I knew the order then, but it took, there was months between the book coming back. I remember taking the book, and being very nervous because I wasn't sure, I didn't remember exactly. But in the end, I was, I was very happy with the sequencing. And I think part of it, like a street photographer, is, is instinct. And, you know, don't think too much, but put it together best you can. I mean, let it percolate, but then put it together and then, you know, it's out. Hold on. Um, you talk a lot about the uh, editing process and, you know, you know, um, shooting too much. Mm. To my understanding, now you shoot digital. Mm. Can you share a little bit about the transition you had shooting from film, working in digital, and how that's kind of maybe helped, but also made more complicating the editing process and yeah. the shooting yeah. process and the project-based approach? I mean, I know you're shooting a lot of film, and I gotta tell you, like, I would not go back, um, mainly for me, because I do tend to shoot a lot, and, and digital was liberating for me, because, you know, again, I'm really trying to push myself, right? We all think the best is yet to come, because it is, regardless of how old you are, the best could be yet to come, yeah. and, and the fact is, I like to shoot a lot because um, I'm looking for images that are not necessarily descriptive or literal but more poetic and lyrical. So you still have the description of place, but then there's something happening in the picture that vaults it. And we saw like David Allen Harvey's work here at GPP. I mean, you know, that's something I inspired to. The layers and the, the poetry and the, you know, the artistry. Yeah. It's still kind of a, a journalistic street photo that appeals to me, but it's also an image that you can put on your wall and not get tired of it. And, and that's my goal, but I know that that does not happen very often. You know, in, in, a, in a way, it's kind of like winning the pottery. As much, but the more you shoot, the more you increase your chances of that happening. And the more you shoot, the more you kind of unconsciously do the right things, because you're creating a lot of work, you're editing, you're looking, you're seeing what works. 
and that gets infused into your uh, process and hopefully it becomes unconscious because ultimately there's no time to be conscious in the street when a million things are happening at the same time and try and make order of the chaos. So for me it's about shooting a lot more. The negative side of course is that I end up you know, having a long time and difficult time editing. Yeah. Now, when you're shooting film, you're not shooting the same kind of quantity, so I suspect it kind of sharpens your um, ability to kind of not overshoot and just kind of go for that, that moment. Uh, but for me, I guess I just don't have the confidence that I've always felt that way, or, you know, I'm just, just overshooting. And digital doesn't cost any extra. Yeah. The only price you pay, I think, I guess a little few extra images storage and the editing process can be, uh, but I, I, I really, um, you know, I know that from one image to the next can, you know, I'm just trying to squeeze the strongest image out of every situation that I go to. Uh, editing is easy when you get that killer shot, right? It's yeah. all, it jumps right out. It's, anyone can, but most of the time we're not in that space where we're dealing with a lot of images that are sort of cool, sort of good, which ones and why, and, and that's, you know, it's, it's not an easy process. Um, and you also talk a lot about, um, I guess, the inspirations from other photographers you get. Yeah. So you mentioned Alex Soth. Um, who are some other photographers that you personally get inspiration yeah. from, or other photographers you recommend? Um, you know, yeah. people interested in street photojournalism, right. documentary right. sure, to check out. Sure. I think we're kind of on the same page because, of course, I'm an avid reader of your blog, and I'm, I've seen all the ten things <laughs> you're, you've learned from all these photographers. Yes, and, yes. You know, you kind of, well, one thing that I saw of yours recently when you talked about Eggleston, and, and that was something that, I've heard the, the, the phrase before, this was the, the, the guy from National Geographic, Thomas Cannon, he used to be photo editor back in the day, he said, good color amplifies the content. And for me, as kind of a journalistic photographer, color can be difficult because it can be distracting often. So good color amplifies the content. So, as you know, when you study Eggleston, for example, yeah. or Ernst Haas, and you see the color palette that they use, you can learn a lot from that. And, you know, I'm, I'm trying to learn about that because it's not something I've really consciously thought about, but I do love those ordinary pictures that have somehow, when you link them all together as a set, and that's my idea of passion and working on a theme, you have this amazing body of work that uh, each picture might be very disjointed, but in some strange way it's the color off of that's, and that's creating the mood and atmosphere that carries through the entire body of work. And, and that kind of consistency, I think, is, is really something to strive for. And the more you shoot, I think, the more... Sometimes we can't see our style because we're too close to it, but if I look at your stuff, I can see it maybe easier than you can, and maybe you can see mine easier than I can, because it's not a deliberate thing, it's just kind of organic. And so like Eggleston, Haas for color, I like, Eugene Richards was a mentor of mine, he's an amazing uh, documentary journalist. He gets so close to his subjects emotionally that, you know, it's just, you wonder how he even does it. So I think there's a lot to be gleaned and you can take little nuggets from everything that you see and somehow use it in a way that will be your own ultimately. That's the goal. Um, so, you know, Oftentimes, there's a lot of street photographers out there trying to find more of their voice, um, trying to create strong images, get closer to their subjects, emotionally and probably physically. Um, what are, um, you know, as you're starting to wrap this up, yeah. like, um, I guess, words of wisdom or mm -hmm. um, things you wish you knew when you started off yeah. um, in your photography? Yeah, well, that's good. You know, one of the things that I maintain that, you know, the technical side of photography is the easiest thing to fix for people, but it's often a barrier for a lot of people, and um, the camera has to really kind of disappear, and like riding a bike, there's a lot of complex things happening when you get on a bike and ride, but you're not conscious of it. You know, you're brushing your teeth, you could be thinking of a lot of stuff. I think as a photographer, there'll always be that technical left brain stuff that you have to set your shutter speed and aperture. But once you make those decisions, I think you really have to be fluid and just shoot. The more free you can be from technical, yet still in control and knowing what your pictures are going to look like, yeah. the feel, shutter speed, all that, that's when the pictures that really um, make you say, wow, I took that, start to, to show. Because 
the camera can get in the way sometimes. So, Definitely. you know, it, it's an in autofocus, you know, that's a great thing, but it's also kind of a not so great thing. And we've seen, you know, I'm kind of a DSLR guy, and that's a big camera, but I'll still use it on the street. Um, I have saw, you know, you're, you've been playing with some new equipment, and I know you've you know, got a Leica, and you've been using you know, Flash and all that. But, but again, it, it just has to kind of disappear so that you can get the picture. Mm -hmm. So anyone that's having some frustration, um, the technical is the easiest thing to fix. And, and once you've gone through the volume and learned how to make that camera disappear to the extent that it can, that's when you're going to start to see. Sometimes for a lot of photographers, it's kind of frustrating, frustrating, frustrating. And there's a tipping point as you go through a volume of work where suddenly okay, I, I kind of get this, and I'm starting to get the pictures that I know I can get, I know I can make, but I just, something's been off and I haven't been getting them. So it's the persevering, and everyone can push to see you know, how far they can go. Everyone's got a unique you know, vision, so you want to kind of tap into it, and you know, just try not to uh, think that you can't, you can have a limit somewhere. Um, and uh, as you're wrapping up, can you share some projects you're currently working on or things you'd like to let people yeah. who are watching know about? Sure, sure. Well, I think that um, for me, my next big project was uh, kind of springboarded from my book, Heroes and Heroes, HIV in Africa, which I dedicated to the grandmothers because the grandmothers that I met um, had lost their own children to HIV AIDS and they were left with these little grandchildren and great-grandchildren and they were raising them as elderly women yeah. alone very little money. So this is a bit different for me, but and I've been inspired by some of the great lighting people here at GPP. I think I would like to do kind of a portrait project of these grandmothers. I'd like to make maybe medium format or just make these giant prints of these amazing women lit beautifully and printed large just to kind of shine the light on them um, and maybe uh, you know, bring some awareness and maybe I could you know, do something to sort of help the situation. I know if I do that project, I'm going to benefit in many ways. Um, but I think it would be a good one. And, but I've always got things on the go. I've always got, uh, I think it's important to have something. That, that's going to require me to travel, but I always want to be ha have something local because I'm local all the time, so I want to be able to go out with my camera and just keep going through the volume because I know that's going to, that's where I'm going to improve the most as long as I keep shooting rather than thinking about project. I want to do that. That's uh, something that's on my, my list, but I also want to just keep shooting just for myself on the streets and little projects here and there if I'm inspired to do. I can do if there's like an event. Oh, I'm going to the Holly Festival in Jaipur. Oh, nice. Tomorrow. Wonderful. It's one day, but I'm going to go that and we'll see. I mean, I'm not putting pressure, but I'm, I knew it was happening. I'm in Dubai. It's three hours away. I might as well. I've never been to India. Oh, so, well, never. No, oh, no. you're going to have an amazing time. I know it will. So it's only three days, but intense, right? That day I'm going to just be out there all the time and you know, hopefully uh, you know, we'll see what happens. Um, and yeah, so for people who want to follow you, your work, um, where can people see more of your work and um, yeah. stuff like that? Well, my website is stevesimonphoto.com and I'm hoping to get, I have sort of a preliminary blog framework up. I'm hoping to have a blog like Eric Kim <laughs> someday with a lot of material on it. I think I have a lot to say, so that's in the works. I definitely want to have that conversation with other passionate photographers out there. And then my book, The Passionate Photographer, you can check it out um, at Amazon and, and other places, I guess. Sweet. All right, thank you so much. Hey, it's my pleasure. All right. It's awesome. All right, wish uh, Steve a good trip to India. Try and uh, check him out. All right, peace out.